Let's go back to Acts here, two, very brief, briefly, if you don't mind. Please step. Acts two. It says here, <clears throat> and there we read the first verse. It says, "Suddenly, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven." If your Holy Ghost don't come from heaven, you don't have it. Amen. Now you lock a person up in a room somewhere and try to try to aggravate them enough. That's not of God. I don't know what kind of spirit up in there. Hello? We're going to talk just a little bit. Amen. <clears throat> and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Now I don't know why you got yours. But I'm telling you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, if I'm lying here, Jesus ain't Lord in my life. Amen. And he ain't Lord never. But I heard the tongues coming before they got in the mind. I heard the same tongue I heard up, it came down. Amen. That's what it did for me. And I heard the same, I'm speaking the same thing I heard. I'm speaking the same identical thing that I heard. And see, you, you, you still, if you got the Holy Ghost, you got to guard it. Amen. Yeah. Got to guard it. And some people, you know, one time, time you go out here and you run ahead of the Holy Ghost, and then you won't get it because anything you put before the Holy Ghost, you just put that before God. Amen. God don't have no problem with you getting that. But he says better if you don't. It's just like I like to tell Mr. Jen O'Jennings when he was talking about Paul didn't take money and all that. Paul didn't have a wife. Why do you got one? You claim you got to feel the Holy Ghost and seven. Why do you have one then? Since you said Paul didn't take no money, why would you get married then? When Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 7, he said, if you marry, he said, I would that every man abide his up. He said, you're married, you have not sinned, that's good. He said, I'll show you better if you don't. Yeah. That's in your Bible. Yeah. This is in your Bible. It ain't my, I didn't write this. I didn't write this. But people that push that off, just, not of course, important. Anyway, one thing, and there appeared unto them cloven in tongues, cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it set up on each of them. That is the only time you hear about fire. Go back over here to Mark, Mark, Matthew 3, right quick. I, I want to just walk you down through the scriptures here and show you. Matthew 3 and verse 11. You see that? Matthew 3, verse 11. If you don't see it, don't you like walk. Amen. Put on you back was all you can see. Matthew 3 11, you see that? He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. John talking about. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I whom shoes I'm not worthy, worthy to bear. What's the problem? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with what? Fire. Did fire fall? That they were like a tongue before I got them in them. Amen. John said to speak it. Now, we don't hear no more about fire falling because it's already burnt through. Don't hear no more about it. Not fire. But John the baptized, John said it was going to happen. Go back to that screen. Now, why do these apostles keep doing it? Let's go over here to Acts, uh, the 10th chapter, quickly. That's all I'm holding up. Now, I want you to remember what I told you in Acts 8. 1 and 8, he told them that, uh, and we're going to use Acts 2, 41 and 2, 42, that they continue steadfastly, fastly, fastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and in breaking of bread. Are you listening in prayer? Now, why would why some people don't have it? Because the reason I want to just use that just for a second here is to let you know that they stayed there 10 days and nobody had ever received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Nobody but Jesus Christ. And somebody said, well, he didn't speak in tongues. 
I want you to, if you read Matthew 3, when he, after he was baptized, I guarantee you, heaven spoke. Because when the Holy Ghost falls, something's going to happen. Amen. He made a statement. He said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well. It's that in the heaven open. Hmm? And the spirit descended as a dove. Amen. And a voice spoke. Amen. You don't receive this. Hmm? Amen. You don't receive this. I'm talking about, I'll go to the Holy Ghost. Well, you might not. Help me here. <laughs> you might just have a ghost. Amen. And I'm, this, this, is, this, this is, the Bible talks about we got to make our a calling and election sure. Now, this, this is what we want to look at here over here in the 38th verse. You see that? And God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil for God was what? Amen. Give God some amen. amen. Give God some amen. Now, some of us sometimes that we, what we get into here, why would Peter, God had told them to go and spread the same doctrine over the whole world, starting in Jerusalem, in Judea. Now, what my problem, I need the same Holy Ghost that we found out when it's not the same Jesus. Yeah. The of them say he came back as God, the Father. Jerry will never become you. <laughs> Jesus ain't never been the Father. And never will be. He never said he was. Are you listening to the church? Help me here. Now, and, and we are witnesses of all of these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hung hanging on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Amen. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God even to us. God chose who you want to do. You can't just receive the Holy Ghost in some corner somewhere. Help me, Jesus. But you can't put me. You, you baptize me, don't nobody see me because you ain't got time. Don't have time. Take you in the baptism pool out of sight. But you know what they got in sight? The communion table come and do this. Remember, they sitting on it, farting on it, doing everything. Take up money on it. it it's crazy. Who is that? Sister Willis is listening. Bob Blair. I forgive you, got you know who cut it off. Uh, throw it in the garbage or something. See, I'm going to show you this. You're talking about distraction. See, this is the problem, the reason we don't, we're not strong, because of distractions. See, we, we get in some delusional problems, and we get delusional things, distract us, this is what happens. See, that distracted us. Distraction. And see, one thing about when we, we get distracted, we need direction. And see, when we get direction, and we if, if, if we don't know where we're going, any road will take us there. Huh? Because we get distraction. And we get distraction, the enemy of the uh, of direction, the enemy of, of distraction, let me put it this way, is the greatest enemy the devil can use with you. It's an enemy because, see, right now we, we get distracted. And see, that's why we don't have to hold the door. We get a job, God will give us what we think want. Now we relax. 
See, one thing about comfort, comfort blocks your vision for where God needs to take you at. It blocks you. You're comfortable. Nobody want to be out of their comfort zone. It blocks us. Comfort, distract, comfort blocks our vision from where God, if we run to look trouble, we ready to quit. But when I run into trouble, I thought, hey, give me the strength to go over, or give me get the right. God doing what he's doing. Yes. Yes, Isaiah 54, 17 talks about something. Amen. No weapon that's formed against you. No weapon. It didn't say so. Now, just because God don't come, this might be God's plan for me. Give me good mind, God. I don't want to get into that. I'm getting into another, I'm getting into another atmosphere. Are you listening to me? We need, if we get distraction, see, now Peter them didn't get distracted. Amen. God, here's Cornelius over here. If I go back, I'm not going back and read this first. Cornelius was an Italian. Not a Roman Catholic, okay? <laughs> and he prayed and fasted. He was a devout man, he wasn't a Christian. God had Peter wake up, both of them up on both ends, mm -hmm. have them to come together, and Peter would not be the church. He wasn't in the delusion, he didn't get distracted. He didn't get distracted. Because we get distraction, you know, first thing, we don't have direction. Amen. Because anytime we take, we get distracted, we lost our direction now. And when we lose our direction, then we lose our alignment with the Word of God. Because the Bible said, Blessed the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not standing away in the sun, not set in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Turn your Bible to Proverbs 28 and 4. Let's see what it says, man, quickly. And, and don't get me wrong, the devil, don't, the devil, like I said, is an enemy of, of our vision. Because you're going to get, and as and, and long as we can feel comfortable with it, anything that we have a little problem with, it cannot be of God. We're ready to quit. What about the Holy Ghost that's in us? That's teaching us. What about the Holy Ghost that's supposed to teach us? I don't have to sit, listen to me. I told it, I told it little method of prep. I said, now why would I have to sit down and discuss whether homosexual with a bunch of food is right or not? He got down to the problem, he got to come. Well, sin is sin. No, it's not. That's an abomination. This is abomination of God. Help me, Lord Jesus. Yeah, Lord. They that forsakes the law praises the wicked. Do you see what I'm talking about? You won't believe that. I'm telling you. Tell you. You don't, you, you were listening to ungodly stuff. Mm -hmm. But if the Bible says here, they that forsakes the law praise the wicked. Contend with them. Amen. See, you don't see that because they can distract you. See, because you go, when you go along with them, well, they ain't going to hurt you to miss something. They gonna, and we listen to this stuff. We're going to pray for you. It's big, ladies, rather than I said, he, he kind of hard, man. Oh, I'm going to do the right. What am I do with the Bible then? This scripture don't bother. Did I tell you reading your Bible? Excuse me. Bible's making up the scripture. <laughs> huh? Bible's making up them scripture. We got people. Well, I know I should have done it. Well, if your dumb leg is riding off and you tell me I should have done it, too late now. What, what you understand, God is not a respecter person. And we're talking about the Holy Ghost. God is not going to give somebody who give them repentant, got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for a true repentant. God going to give you the Holy Ghost. You ain't going to tell me different. You telling me God's a liar? No, sir. 
Well, what are we going to do in the scripture? God not respect the person. We go all through the Bible and say, God is not a respected person. And no, he tell you don't have any. So God will fill me with the Holy Ghost and won't fill you and you with him to sign. Something is wrong. Amen. Nothing wrong with God, something wrong with me. Amen. Now, hear me good. Once we receive the Holy Ghost, why are we, we shining and bright? If people, once they receive the Holy Ghost, they, they revert, not even on their back. Here they here's the spirit that you're in. Where did you get that spirit from? All right. They don't have no come. They oh, help me, Lord. Because they not alive. They don't study the word of God. Amen. Hello here. Yes, Go back to Acts briefly. What distraction does is break your focus on where God wants you to go. Hmm? We need to line up with the word of God. Because here's the problem. We have commitment, but we got to have discipline with our commitment. And we need to ask ourselves, am, uh, am I willing to really pay the cost for the receiving the Holy Ghost? That's the problem with most people. Are you really willing to pay the cost? It's people suffer through football, they, they talk about it, man. They talk about it. that. Oh, all right. They still a play. These guys get hurt out in the football field. And you know what they do? They, they get back and coach don't put them back in there. Man, I want to go back in. If they didn't match in there, they'll take the heaven, throw it down. Man, I could have won another yard. We come to Christ and we all want to go to heaven, do Help me here. Well, yeah. some people. Well, well, we, we got our helpers mixed up. Look what I'm saying. Go back to Acts quickly. Amen. You don't mind. Amen. It says, not to all, Acts 1041, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And these people tell you that Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead. He rose the Almighty God. Well, God has never sat down and eat with nobody. Hmm? I've been walking with God for a pretty long time. He never came and sat down and ate with me. <laughs> Told me he was hungry. Uh -huh. He sent an angel to return, and while he's in, the, in that position, then he can eat something because that is a custom out that you give respect to whatever God can send there. Mm -hmm. You give respect to that. We show through all through the Bible. For it says, the the second verse, and he commanded us to preach unto the people. Did he say command just to tell him? Well, do it if you want. If you feel good, one more to do it. Huh? <laughs> he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and who? Amen. Give God some amen. amen. God is not going to judge nobody. Jesus is going to judge you. Amen. Jesus is going to judge you. And it's according to this gospel. According to this gospel. Not another one, this gospel. According to this gospel, he's going to judge you. Look what he says. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believe in him shall receive remission of sin. That means the forgiveness of sin. Baptists tell you, now what Baptists do in this here, you go get your comment, you'll get you a Bible, get some commentary in there, because it's written by Thomas Chain. They're going to tell you, well, see, baptism uh, have nothing to do with God. And you don't, they, uh, 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 you don't have to speak in tongue or nothing like that. Have nothing to do with it. All you got to do is believe. That's what they say. Well, that ain't what the Bible says. And this is why I'm telling you, them devil, so-called evangelicals, they ain't saved, raised in hell. 
They, they, got, they, they, they got everything going that's against God now in this state. Free guns, anything, gambling, uh, uh, betting, betting on a football game, anything you can think of. Anything. Now, what they're doing now also, watch this, but they're, but they're showing these people who are something, man. What? Because they are stealing most. They know that they got them guns in them cars and they just go and get them. Because yeah. a white man thinks the gun, he said, his guard is his gun. Well, if you don't need a guard, you don't need God if you got your gun. They're breaking in them and they just, they, they don't want the car. They get your guns out of there. Because see, long time ago, back 40 years ago, 45 years ago, the white man used to run around with his gun telling him, brother, up he had a gun rack in the back of his truck. And they had to keep their guns up there. Huh? Well, black folks start taking them from them. <laughs> now they're taking them out of the car because they know how to get in them. And you don't know, they like to know right back. You go home looking for your gun and you ain't got no gun. They got everything in this state, gambling, prostitution, anything. They, they come in. I'm glad they did something. Thank you, Brother William. They got the truck all out. They put the law against them. Truck ran up. Like, I, I came home to see out of my Ford truck and I didn't talk to Brother William. This thing up. I, I grabbed my truck. I'm just like, that's a man. Man, I'm a judge something. He hadn't got this thing all ran up like it's a like it's a horse right there. You know? <laughs> huh? Got it all jacked up. Brother William can't get up in there. If you put him up in there, he said, somebody come get me now. <laughs> you don't need a rat to get out of there, man. They pass a lot of all this time. Huh? Because they see most black folk got they the white boy got hit up so high we get big old wheel run that road. It's bigger than the road with the mud grips on it. Just saying you can hear about three miles before it comes from what's that? He passed you, he my God, he passed you in Clinton, and my God, he and Edwards you still in here. Crazy. Are you listening to me, Church? Hey, just want to throw that out. You're mad about it. Now, let me let me just show you this, and I'm, I'm hoping real quick. Cause we're gonna continue to get it to get it back to you, cause we we see people they don't have any spiritual. See, when you don't know the word of God, you're spiritual bankrupt. Amen. And the word of God keeps you spirit, spiritually healthy. Thank you, Lord. Why well, I'm saying that? Because you look at Psalms three and three. I mean, one in three. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. When you don't walk in there because you delight in his law, they, oh, you listen to me? It, you don't get in the spiritual, spiritual energy. Amen. And see, we get so distracted. Or we'll be so tired when we come home. We just don't have time to get in that Bible. Because it puts me to sleep. Well, now you got your, the, the best sleeping pill you got. Amen. Huh? But if you need to go to Walmart and get you some, 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 you'll get up and wall up the Walmart, amen, and get mad because they closed. So you just stop by Walgreens and get it because it costs a little more. But you got to have it. You understand what I'm saying? Help me, Lord. Now, I just, I just got to get this to you because this has just been pressing on me. He said, and to give. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believe in him shall receive remission of sin, forgiveness of sin. Yes. Now we know he's talking about repentance and so on and so forth like that because we got us through. While Peter yet spake these words, what happened? No, 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 no. Come on, come on, brother. Let's go in this little room back here so I can pray for you to get the Holy Ghost. Huh? No, let me go back. Oh, no. Go tarry for it. Hmm? Go tarry for it. Go tarry for it. Why, people, you ain't never seen them. Everyone ever see the Holy Ghost out in public. These shoot on devil 
Bible changes? Because they don't have time to deal with you. Right. Everybody else having fun. And then you're driving now. God can give you the Holy Ghost if you're ready for it. When Pete, God told Peter to, to go tarry for the Holy Ghost, there was up there in the upper room about 120 people. Somebody wasn't nobody in there. No, you dumb head, because it's people all around that heard them speak and magnify God. They wasn't in some room, upper room. God, and where your upper room at? It can't just be you up in there, one person. I know he ain't jacked something in there. Let me just tell you, this is thousands and thousands of people that went down there to be with Jesus, to see him all over the world, and didn't know this man and all these people. See, you don't even know people. You don't even know people. Here, this man. Uh, uh, it alone before he come out to preach. He sent them guys to have all sex with him. Had thousands. Thousands of people. Over 19,000 people could be in that place. These people drive everywhere. These people could drive everywhere. See, oh, they have this powerhouse men leadership there. These people flock down there. I just saw him. He did his head. I said, "Man, look, I said, there's no this a prophet coming, Jackson. He don't sign books. I ain't never seen a, a preacher sign no book, not in the Bible. If in the Bible, when a preacher went, he would start a revival, a a, a riot. <laughs> I ain't never seen. Oh, we so glad that Jesus, my God, don't tell me that they strapped up on Jesus when he was even feeding them and stuff." Jesus came in town and they throw money at his feet. Bob and Wolf, George Myers come in town with her clown faith. <laughs> Had so many faith left, they they going to have to take her bone all this off because it's so heavy, it just automatically drops down. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> her lips look like the Joker lips. They cut all the way back like this. Yeah, chuck it off sometimes. <laughs> You're an epitomization of nothing. Hell cut like this, God will tell you not to cut your hair. Don't trim it, don't nook, don't mess with it. One lady told me, she was here, crazy self. She said, she said, she said, that my, my beauty parlor told my, my beautician told me that my hair is just like a tree and it looked like one. So it needs to be, it needs to be cut. I promise you, man. You know, my God, she has some rough hair, man. I said, your beauty parlor ain't going. God said, don't cut it. Don't clip it. Huh? Now your, you and your beautician gonna be in the hell. Or your beautician might repent and you go to hell. <laughs> Here we go, let me go. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard what? Word. You ain't gonna just receive the Holy Ghost without hearing the word of God because we got people to read and have to receive the Holy Ghost because they're not convicted. So the reason people don't receive the Holy Ghost is because they get distracted. When you get distracted because a woman can distract you yeah. from receiving it. If I claim I got the Holy Ghost and go out here with a woman today, how am I going to get her? Or she come up in here, how am I going to get her? Are you listening to church? I need to get what God has promised me. God promised me the Holy Ghost. He didn't promise me a man or a woman. He promised me the Holy Ghost. He promised me that. Once I came a believer, I need to get born again believer. I got to believe before I get born again. I don't get born again, then I believe. I get I believe. And then I get born again. 
And the Baptist will tell you, well, you born again. No, you're not. They are all tell you, you're not. You're the spirit is the only one that born you. Yes, Lord. They'll tell you that, that the church started on the day of Pentecost. Well, did it start with like this? Or, or repeat after me and raise your hand. 5,000, over almost 3,000 people raised their hand and, and, and Peter just baptized. But they said baptism have nothing to do with salvation. Have nothing to do with it, period, you Baptist evangelicals. Liars. Yes. Hmm? Right. You telling me you're not gonna get me in that? If, if I'm wrong, God going to show it to me. So what I'm supposed to do with this Bible then? Yes. Here we go. So you understand what I'm saying? By yes. Peter, he expect the words the Holy Ghost fell on them, all them which heard the word. Not a word, the word. And there the circumcision which believed was astonished as many as came with Peter because on the Gentile also was poured out the gift of what? Here's some Jews because they're talking about circumcision. They were circumcised and people tried to tell you the case. All kinds of stuff. You got to be circumcised. The Bible said you don't have to be circumcised. That was a covenant. Uh, other uh, ungodly nation did it also. Are you listening to me? But this is God covenant with Abraham. Amen. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Watch this one, I'm telling you. Now, wait a minute. And they of the circumcision which believed with the stunners of men as came with Peter because on the Gentile also were pulled out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. For they heard them speak with other tongues and magnified God. Do you see that? Amen. What did they interpret that then? Wait a minute. I'm, 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 I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it like this. I'm in this room. Can y'all hear me speaking in tongues in this room? My God. <laughs> Do you hear me speaking in tongues? Huh? He turned out, people heard him, I all heard him. Now where do you get this from? Where did these churches get this word from? If you don't can't receive it in the front of everybody, just every way they win the Bible. <laughs> Brother Donald, why y'all? Why, why, why you let these preachers do, do the Bible like this? No. Hmm? We don't take you in the back when you pray for you. No. They don't even have some of them. You can't. But man, look, this one girl come here and, and she said, Well, I got baptized up there at, 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 at Jared Dillon Church at, 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 at First Pentecostal up, 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 up there uh, 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 in, in Madison. And, and I said, Listen, She said, Man, they just told us come on back there and got baptized. People left. I said, What? <laughs> Jesus got baptized in the name of Jesus. We got baptized. Now we got to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because the Bible said God has made him both Lord and Christ. Huh? So now I got to do it because God made him. Because people said that same Jesus whom you crucified. She said, I said, baby, what? She said, no. She said, no, we just went on back there and they just got tired. And nobody said, we just got up. Everywhere you go, you got to receive. If you can't, God is not a respected person, man. Where did he get to see the devil? I told you, anyway, distraction is an enemy of your direction that God is trying to take you to. Anytime you get distracted from something, Peter them get distracted from people, their job, everything. Why do you get the job? Because God blessed you to get it. Amen. Who sent the stiff on God? You got to be willing to pay a price. If you're not willing to pay a price, you're not going to get this. Peter them stayed up there uh, for 10 days. That wasn't what they normally would do. They didn't normally stay there. But they stayed 10 days because they were willing to stay there until they get it. And we got people that are not willing to do nothing. Now they're going to see a woman, they'll drive 900 miles. Or they're going to 
don't see a man. They can ride an plane and fly to Kentucky to have sex with him and come back. What? Are you listening, church? But when it comes to the Holy Ghost, and every time somebody dies, these people are lying. You don't have no Holy Ghost. You ain't got it. Help me, Jesus. Help me here. When they heard them speak in the room, behind the door, huh? With tongue, magnifying God, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which receive the Holy Ghost as well as what we? Help me, Lord. Why is it that we, we, you know, tell me this, and, and maybe, maybe y'all can help me to get myself lined up because I'm, I'm, I'm out of line with God. Why is it that we can't be thirsty for the Holy Ghost? And, and why and we claim to be happy? Tell me the truth in here. Since you received the Holy Ghost, have you got any more trouble for God? You should. If you I'm telling you, I said, distraction keeps you from doing it. It's people, with, once you see the Holy Ghost, they'll find a way to get married with you, and you're helping them. Now, before that, they didn't do that. Is that teaching you? The Holy Ghost has to teach you. It's not a force. The Holy Ghost is not some kind of a, a, a spiritual force that's going to throw you down and keep you. You've got to value it. But I'll be darned if all the time that I feel the spirit, or if I can speak in tongues, and when I come in this building, then I don't know, I got I got a building, Holy Ghost. And the only time that I'm serious about it is the only time because I'm doing everything, getting this great. I don't care what it is. People say, well, you been, let me, I'm going to take our time to spend with God every day. I don't care what it is. Do I call you? You know, I said, preacher, call me. You call me. 6 30. Call me. Man, you call me. I ain't answering the telephone. Hmm. Nah. They don't know where they're coming on Wednesday night. They know what to What are you calling me for, man? Amen. Shut up. Find out your schedule. But you know, I don't want nobody to call me and text me and say, did you get my text? Now you go to hell. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I have more things to do than just wait for you to text me or I didn't do. My God, you don't know that the telephone said go through what? I got the other stuff to do. Right. Huh? Amen. You see, when people do this stuff, well, it maybe, it, it look, I, we can't, we're not discouraging, but don't challenge it like that. Don't challenge them like that. I ain't just sitting around like the Maytag man. They went out of business. Huh? <laughs> right, this is true. My daughter, I'm going to tell you, man, I have time. That they don't talk to me, I don't talk to them. Because if I don't spend no time with God, they ain't going to have nothing. I'll be just like you coming here, wild eyed and bushy tail. Just look. Huh? My problem is, man, if I've been here any time, let me tell you something, brother. There's no way, is nobody going to tell me. I don't care who you are. You ain't going to tell me. You've been around here five years, ten years, and you don't have the heart to go. Something is wrong with you. You have 